Hi, welcome to the Grim Tutors, your one-stop shop for all things Magic the Gathering. I'm Colton, also known as Pez. And I'm Oblivion. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about what the French fries is Magic the Gathering. What the frackadoo is Magic the Gathering. What the fudge? Fun is Magic the Gathering. Oh, see, you thought of another one. Um, what the flounder? The flower? What the founder? What the fuck is Magic the Gathering? That was a curse word. I have a cat on me, uh, not pertaining to Magic the Gathering. He's just uh, a co-host. He's just going to be here, and I hope that's okay. Um, we're trying to keep it as professional as we can, but sometimes a little kitty may make a guest appearance. I think he's awfully handsome. So, in today's episode, uh... As been established, we're just going to be talking about magic. Tell us, my beautiful co-host, how long have you been playing magic? So I learned how to play in 2021, and after playing for about a month, I took like a year or so off, and I would say I've been like seriously playing magic for like a year. Outstanding. That sounds like, uh, have you been having a good time? Oh, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. I've learned a lot. I think that there's a lot more that I don't know. I mean, obviously, but I feel like I'm in a good place where I can have fun and play the game and not be super confused, but also recognizing that there's still so many things that I don't know. Super nuanced things about Magic the Gathering. Yeah, like just the real nitty gritty specific things a lot of the slang I still kind of have some trouble with a lot of the stuff we're going to be teaching you here on the podcast and then I get to learn it too yay we're all learning along the way so how long have you been playing magic like Uh, a long time right not as long as some people but I have been playing magic the gathering since uh 2011 uh when original Innistrad had come out so you got your powerhouses like the original printing of Liliana the Veil uh, Snapcaster Mage, Delver of Secrets, uh, Ancient Grudge. Uh, Innistrad is the um, uh, HP Lovecraft. HP Lovecraft's Cthulhu. Yes, that is. Uh, it's it's that eldritch like your vampires your werewolves your humans that are trying to fight against said vampires and werewolves you got zombies ghouls spirits angels demons the whole nine that sounds like a really fun goth girl thing i should i wish i would have known how to play magic then what is what is that since 2011 we're now in 2023 how many how many years is that that's 12 12 years 12 years of my life have been dedicated to this game that has been made by richard garfield so what made you even start playing like did you just wake up one day and be like i'm gonna play magic the gathering i had always seen a uh, magic the gathering product in like walmart you know target um i didn't know uh lgs's were a thing at the time uh lgs standing for local game store uh, always remember to support your local game store before going to Target and Walmart. If you do not have a local game store around that you uh, use Target and Walmart. No hatred. Just always remember to support your LGS first. What got me into Magic the Gathering? That is a great question. So I went over to my friend uh, Zach's house one fateful summer of the summer of 2011. Um, and he was like, hey, you want to learn how to play Magic the Gathering? And I was like, as the podcast title says, what is Magic the Gathering? What is it? I had no idea. Is that, is that like poker? I didn't know. Uh, so I sat down, uh, I played a mono red, uh, burn deck which was just like goblins goblins and lightning bolts and lava axes and 
all things direct damage at the time, some shocks, just as fast as you could go, kind of thing. And he played uh, Vampire Nighthawk, and I severely lost the game because of that. Is it something that he had been into for a while, or did he have like a brother, cousin, uncle kind of thing on him? His brother had p been playing Magic the Gathering for a very long time, I think since about 98, 97, 98, somewhere around in there. Um, so he had learned from his brother and, um, you know, they were still super big into the game at the time and he wanted to teach me. And here we are, still playing. I think that that also really goes to the point of like, 99.7% of people who play Magic the Gathering play it because someone that they know played the game and they wanted to learn how to play the game. Absolutely. Uh, Magic the Gathering is definitely one of those games where if you um, weren't around somebody or something that already did Magic the Gathering related things um, you probably weren't getting into Magic uh, which is unfortunate because uh, I feel like a lot of people um, haven't branched out into the game because there hasn't been a proper way of learning the game I, case in point, me I wanted to learn how to play the game when I was like 12 or 13 probably I had seen it in a store, probably, and just thought that like the art was cool. I understood that it was like a card game, and I loved playing card games growing up. You know, anything from Go Fish to Gin Rummy, whatever. And it, I was like, okay, so you can play a card game, and you can have like these beautiful paintings on the cards. Exactly, that was one big thing that drew me to Magic, um, especially starting out in Innistrad, was the beautiful artwork. Absolutely, and you can tell by the artwork that it has some sort of like mystical fantasy thing to it, which seems like right up my alley. As the good old days um, visit the shores of imagination. Yeah, and it just seemed really cool, but I didn't know anybody who played it. Um, we had a local game store in town, and it just was not... Like, I didn't know that you could just go. I thought that you had to either go there to buy something or you kind of already had to know how to play to be able to go there. I did not see it as a potential thing that you could go and just be like, hey, I want to play this game and I don't know how. Right. Didn't see it as a, um, a place of play. You just saw it as a storefront. Right. And I didn't know that people did play there and if they did play there I definitely didn't think that they would want to like teach me right because if you're going you would think that your average person going isn't going there to teach other people to play they just want to go have a relaxing day and just play the game it wasn't until 2021 <laughs> this is so embarrassing uh I matched with a guy on tinder shout out to Justin <laughs> I matched with a guy on Tinder and uh, we went out for coffee and we just started talking about hobbies and I was like, what are some things that you like to do in your free time? And he's like, I like to play games. I was like, oh, you know, card, tabletop, video. And he's like, I love to play Magic the Gathering. And I'm like, I've always wanted to learn how to play Magic the Gathering. And he's like, I mean, I'd teach you. We need a fourth because they were playing Commander, which is a format that is multiplayer and they needed a fourth basically so that's how i learned how to play magic now admittedly i got i wouldn't say that i was taught poorly but i will say that i was taught enough to fill that fourth seat kind of thing but not enough to really feel like you were engaged in the playing of magic the gathering definitely not enough to be engaged in the actual game it was basically like you're gonna play a land and if you have enough lands to make mana then you can play a spell if you have enough 
which is not the most fun time I'll be I'll be totally honest and looking back now at what I knew then versus what I know now I it, it, you, it's just crazy how little knowledge you go into playing this game and then you look back and you're like oh wow I had no friggin idea that is definitely one thing uh, that comes with time with this game uh, and I feel like a lot of people kind of disregard is how much you actually have to learn first started out of course as a lot of people I didn't really know a whole lot you know uh, I knew how to tap my lands I knew how to play creatures um, instants and sorceries did not make sense to me at all uh, in the beginning um, mostly because I thought creatures were a lot cooler uh, at the time you know uh, building up a big old board I thought that was really cool I would say the number one thing that I did not realize until getting into the game is something that I again like did not think about until I heard our, our buddy Dylan say it on the play to win podcast which is magic is the only card game that you are able and encouraged to interact with other people during their turn so he started playing pokemon which i mean i'm a i'm 30 right i was into pokemon but i collected the cards because they were cute and i liked the little dudes and i played the games but i never played pokemon as a card game as a tcg as it were it was also more into the collecting of pokemon than the playing uh i did learn how to play it um and it is a lot different you're sitting down and you start the game and you take your turn and then they take their turn and that's really all that happens there's not i cannot think of a single card game where the idea is not only for you to do things on your turn but that you are also able and encouraged to do things on other people's turns and i would say that that is prob that key differentiator is definitely the hardest thing to learn and something that you would not because it's the only game that does it it's not something that you would just inherently assume is possible right and i think it's another thing that makes magic stand out and makes it that much more fun to play is that you just get to interact with your opponent so much more. You really, it's not just I play cards and then you play cards and we'll see who wins. It really is like I can be strategic. I can do different things and I can, I can win on your turn in some instances, right? Throwing it way back to 2011, what is the first deck that you built or bought? Um. Back then, they did have uh, pre-constructed uh, decks that you could buy. Uh, I did not do that. Um, I was told, more or less, that I needed to buy a bunch of booster packs to be able to make a deck um, to be able to play. So, um, I had bought... Um, just a whole bunch of uh, loose boosters from the sets around that time uh, and made this it was just like mono white life gain all the creatures that I could think of that either had really big defense so I could block incoming attacks and uh, just gain a lot of life and ha certain creatures whenever I would gain life they would get bigger mm. kind of thing you were real like your strategy was the more life I gain the bigger my dudes can get and also the more protected I am from getting punched in the face right um, the other thing was though is that I didn't really understand like mana curve 
or like anything like that so a lot of the creatures in the deck were like five converted mana it's more or less of like what i would define as like kitchen table magic you just first started you're not really going to an lgs you're not really uh playing anywhere but in the wherever there's a table and wherever your friend is and you're playing in cardboard kind of thing you just go into a buddy's house you've each determined that you're gonna have a deck of x cards and you're just gonna play together yep you're just there to have a good time that sounds like fun how about you what was what was the first deck that you played it was real spicy yeah i sure we'll call it that so uh the first format that i learned how to play was commander because when the conversation came about of teaching me magic it was well what do you want to learn how to play what do you mean i want to learn how to play magic i already told you that right uh there is no 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 one to to say like there was different formats you just thought that you just kind of played the game it was asked you know do you want to learn how to play i think it was standard was what i was given do you want to play a standard format with 60 cards or do you want to play commander with 100 cards and those were the only two options that were given come to find out there's more than two so i said well which one is harder and he said that commander was harder because it's the most different i guess like the gameplay and how it's set up is the most different versus all the other ones and so my thought process and what i told him was if if i can learn how to play the hard one then if the other formats are easier maybe that will be like a good place to start was my thinking so i learned how to play commander first which makes sense you know you you learn the um the hard thing first then everything else should come easy right was that the truth i would say that we're still like the jury's still out on that that's still tbd because honestly to be determined i say that because any format that i play that is not commander obviously the rules are different and you know all of that but the strategy is also very different what you're trying to accomplish is very different what's considered a quote good card is very different because you are competing and you have one opponent instead of three that one thing honestly changes what you are trying to do considerably absolutely because there's not just uh one person that you have to worry about like in uh, a standard format or modern or something of the sort uh you have to worry about three other people who are going to also try and thwart your plans um of winning the game there's obviously there's so much going on there's so much different but when i first tried to play a non-commander format it was the first pre-release that i had gone to for streets of new capenna back in 2022 i was playing my first sealed situation and i'm just looking at these cards and i'm thinking of it from a strategy of commander not really knowing what's going to happen and even the next sealed that we did or i guess it wasn't sealed it was draft but the the next pre-release that we did all that i was thinking about was well what cards do i want to grab for my commander decks and not thinking about the game as it was in that scenario which is not a smart thing to do don't do that not really considering that once you're done with that you now have all of these cards that you still have to make a deck out of and play i digress it's it's very different the rule not again not just the rules but your your strategy your mindset and all of that is really different and it is i would say even today it is still challenging for me to like turn off commander brain and turn on 
whatever else I'm doing brain because there really is a difference between what there really is a difference between cards that are successful in one format versus another that was a really long answer and I still didn't answer your question um so back to the question what was your first deck that you played <laughs> the first deck that I played was a pre-constructed also known as a pre-con commander deck that I bought at Target who was the commander this stupid fucking dinosaur his name is Calamax the Storm Sire and he is an elemental dinosaur I think he was red and green and blue correct on that and his card was very cool and shiny and I thought he was a very handsome dinosaur I could not tell you anything else about what that deck does I honestly don't know what that deck is intended to do that deck is intended for you to buy it for deflecting SWAT and then put it away it, yeah yeah not really but that is the deck that deflecting SWAT came in it was a challenge it was a challenge sitting you know with these people and trying to play and they've got like they're doing stuff and i am i am playing a land right you're sitting down at the table they're all playing their soul rings and mana crypts and chrome moxes and all the things in between and you're sitting there playing land go not really knowing what you're doing right and um not really knowing what I'm supposed to do, not knowing what the objective is. I couldn't, I don't know how that deck wins. I don't know, I didn't know that I was supposed to really try to win kind of thing. I mean, I know that, that sounds silly, but when I say I didn't know I was supposed to try to win, I mean, I didn't know that there were ways that you could win the game outside of just like punching people in the face kind of situation. I, you know what, I was there and I was playing magic and I was so, so happy you fast forward a little bit i'm going to the lgs to play on quote commander night the night that we go and hang out and play commander i am still sitting there playing lands and passing um i can confirm to this that um she was in fact just playing lands and passing i i think i saw her cast a one spell in these six hours the night I first met her. Okay, in all fairness, though, weren't we playing a five-person game? Yes. Okay, so those take a little longer, but also... It's just embarrassing. <laughs> I was definitely concerned, that not just that night, but any night that I had been there prior, that I was going to look stupid um, because I was realizing that other people could do things and I didn't know what those things were I didn't understand how to do them and I just didn't I just didn't want to look dumb I wanted to have a good time I was afraid people would be mean to me um or think that I was stupid b just because like I couldn't really do anything but I didn't know how to do anything but boy howdy did I have that dinosaur so I took the <laughs> The best strategy that I thought, which was, if I can't beat you, I will make you miserable. I will prolong the game at any given chance. But not in, in a fun way like I do now. In a good luck casting your spells kind of thing. Real cheeky kind of way. Yes. I decided that my best strategy was to frustrate uh, maybe frustrate's not the word my best strategy was to make it so people couldn't win so fast because then maybe i'd have a chance so i decided that i was going to build an idris deck and did i ever um tell us about it so it's four colors all of them but white and the objective is 
that I'm going to flip coins at any given point. I'm going to flip coins. I'm going to make treasures. You're going to flip coins to see if your spell resolves. We're going to wheel and deal. Uh, you're going to discard your hand. You're going to make more. Do you like your hand? Too bad. You have to put it away when you go to draw your cards and draw an entire new set of cards because I said so. And it was, it was just, it was madness. It was considered a quote chaos deck. So my entire thing was that you were, you really weren't playing the game anymore at that point. Like when I'm, when I'm having you like auction off your creatures for life, you're, you're kind of not playing magic. Right. Like you're casting thieves auction and the whole table just kind of sits there and, um, just gets kind of sad yeah or that i think it's a possibility storm where let's say you wanted to cast a creature you're not actually casting that creature you're gonna go through the cards in your library to cast whatever creature there is that comes up first so rip to your strategies i guess <laughs> new boot goofing kind of time <laughs> it was fun probably not to play against but I didn't play again. I, I, what did you think of it? It was fine. Uh, I didn't uh, hate it to the capacity that other people hated it. Because I'm also a fan of Goofy Hedris. But I guess in a different kind of way. That it's a, something silly and something different. So you don't hate it. But like, it's definitely... It. I definitely didn't make any friends at that particular time but I wasn't trying to like I didn't realize at the time that it was going to be such a problem I just truly thought like if I can keep you from doing what you want to do then maybe I can do stuff like if uh, I could slow down the game kind of thing then I can have a chance of winning the game Yeah, and I thought that the goofy stuff would really be a hit it was not that was the that was the first decks that I bought and built. Um, you talked about how booster packs is what made your first decks. What what sets were you buying them from? A lot of my uh, collection in the beginning was a lot of the core set that was out at the time. Uh, I can't remember if it was core eleven or core twelve. It's one of the two, because I think core sets awkwardly came out, like, uh, a year, like, in 2011, core set 12 would come out. Oh, so it was like, the, it would come out and it would be named the year that it's not, like, it's the next year. Yeah, I don't, I don't really remember that, um... But I was definitely buying a lot of whichever... I bought a lot of Core Set 2012. I do remember that. Um, but uh, I originally had bought a lot of uh, just Innistrad. Like, there was a whole bunch of other sets that I could have purchased. But I was just buying Innistrad because it was, it was neat. Sounds. Um, the first one that I bought... It probably probably was not until I met you that I even bought a booster pack because I didn't know what they were or why you would buy them or anything about them. I couldn't I couldn't even tell you. Like I can't I truly cannot maybe a new Capenna set. Uh, I was gonna say maybe maybe some new Capenna. Yeah, because we went to the pre-release and had a really good time. And I love the art because I'm super into that like art deco thing. Um I thought that the idea of like the battling families kind of lore story i don't know i thought it was cute right so i probably bought a pack but like i didn't need any of them per se i just i just thought it was cool like maybe i could get more of those like super dope lands that are like the those badass skyscrapers art deco skyscrapers probably the first thing that i bought with an intention was probably that com collector box of double masters because you could get so many expensive cards in it also want everyone to know to not buy 
booster packs expecting a return they are mostly there for fun uh kind of lottery-esque if if you will uh you're not always gonna hit big uh sometimes you'll hit some real stinkers just some absolute like thumbs down kind of stuff uh but it, it happens i wanted to try because we had we had a couple of our buddies open boxes they hit big one of the gals that we drafted with for the pre-release hit big and i was like they could do it i can do it too i didn't well, I definitely didn't make my money back. That's that's for sure. I would say your box was definitely just average. It definitely was. But see, I'm talking about buying like a set booster and a collector booster. And you're just saying booster pack. So like I what is I don't even know. What are you supposed to get in a pack? Like I mean, I get it. I understand that you probably shouldn't buy something with the an anticipation of getting your money back. But what is it that you're really expecting to get when you crack a pack, as they would say? Back in the day of Magic the Gathering, when I started playing, uh, there was only one kind of booster pack, which was uh, what are now considered draft booster packs. So you just got a pack had 15 cards in it uh no guaranteed foils or anything of of the sort uh, had your 11 commons three uncommons one rare or mythic card kind of thing going on um back in the day um you you only got like one rare per booster box like the whole box the whole thing it it was like you were, you could only really get one and if you got two that was like really lucky and really cool so you're buying a box and that's a box of packs and there's like eight packs in a box ten packs in a box so there's 36 booster packs in a box oh okay so that that math is interesting so you've got 36 packs in a box and you're gonna maybe maybe get one mythic or rare not guaranteed you are maybe hopefully going to get at least one foil rare um, in your box but back in the day uh, mythic rares foils were actually like super rare and uh, like delivered those premium prices uh, because they were so rare so um, mythic foils would only come one in a case of booster boxes which is six booster boxes so that is absolutely insane to me and I, I say that not because I'm saying it's insane because it's bad or wrong or incorrect but I'm just saying it as I'm looking at how things are currently right and the magic that I know and understand currently you can just buy a collector booster and like everything in it is foil you might not get like you're definitely going to get mythics and rares but like everything in it is foil and there's some other i want to say there's other ones too aren't there different like more packs that you can buy now oh so now um the booster packs kind of have a little bit of different uh things so you have draft packs you have set boosters and you have collector boosters so today as it stands right now in the year of our lord 2023 you can go to a local game store and you can either buy a draft pack a set booster or a collector booster That's what's the difference a draft pack is what magic packs used to be 
they no guaranteed foil uh, they just come with your standard 15 cards uh, nothing really super fancy about them um, but set boosters they come in uh, a different array of, of pack order have what is called the list uh, in the token slot sometimes in the magic booster so each set booster comes with one guaranteed foil um, can come with multiple rares and or mythics comes with a guaranteed art card there's like a, a pretty like full card of art it is just a card that has the art of a magic card on it um, and then some number of uh, commons and uncommons what's on the list uh a lot of things uh the list changes dependent on what was the coast ones on the list at the time um the list is a special curated uh list of cards that uh are kind of like a supposed to be big hits you get in your booster pack like kind of thing it, it made uh buying that set booster box a little bit more special because you got i think it's either six or eight list cards guaranteed in a set booster box and like some of them can range from uh, cavern of souls to renin six uh phyrexian tower just like a whole bunch of real good stuff but they also uh put a whole bunch of stinkers on it um like just real draft chaff common cards that uh should not be on the list at all in my opinion what the list should be is only rares and mythics um that uh aren't draft chaff kind of things like so like the big so like big hits very popular cards they're trying to use it as an excuse to reprint cards that are expensive they should keep it as that like reprint cards that are expensive to get them in the hands of players so draft chaff is just like stuff it's it's stuff that is not really going to see play in any format they're just cards that exist they're they're basically just like your commons and uncommons that are never going to see play outside of like you drafting them in your draft so we've determined that the difference between draft and set is the list the list has some cards that are awesome and some cards that are less awesome. So that's like your little lottery of buying a set versus a draft. Now we've got collector boosters, which as I recall, are like all foils. Not all foils. Uh, some of them will just be a full art, not foil, but they're still like full art, fancy kind of thing. Gotcha. And especially now that there's 75 different foils and 75 different arts which i'm so excited when we when we like get into like cards specific stuff that we could talk about like all the different ways that they're printing cards because some of it is cool some of it's weird it's all very important to know because now cards aren't just foil they might be phyrexian oil slick or halo or etched fancy border now they have serialized ones. There's cards in this last set that came out that were like X of 500, and it was like stamped on there that it is a fancy boy of this number. Definitely like the products have been 
changing and even in a collector booster like you might still get some commons and uncommons right but like you're you're does isn't aren't those the ones that like increase the likelihood of your rares and mythics because they give you more so you still get commons and uncommons in collector boosters but they're either going to be foil or in a fancy variant of the card um but you're guaranteed a lot more rares and mythics in a collector booster versus a set or draft booster, um, which also commands their higher price tag. Uh, usually your collector booster will run about $20 for the booster pack. Uh, your set boosters, I think, are usually around $7 a pack and draft are around uh four we've talked about how booster packs then versus now i think probably later we'll have like a really big episode kind of about that we've talked about how we've got started but i still feel like there's that age-old question that we still need to answer what is magic the gathering fuck is magic the gathering what is it what is it who knows i don't but i thought you did a lot of it because my knowledge of it is very minimal as you could probably guess there's lots of lore that i know none of it uh the lore of magic the gathering is uh very very cool I'm sure that it's very cool but i know none of it we are not going to talk about the lore currently you've probably seen a lot of stuff around here lately like last uh, October was Magic 30 in the the convention in Vegas. So 30 years of Magic the Gathering. Magic and I been on the earth the same amount of time. So what what is it? Magic the Gathering is a tradable card game made by our uh, loving founder, Richard Garfield. Um, Currently produced by our overlords, Wizards of the Coast. Magic the Gathering uh, started out in it it fully became a game in 1993 i believe they were play testing the game um a few years before that um kind of like buffing out the 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 card game um it was richard garfield patented it in 1997 um how like Magic the Gathering cards like work, like how TCGs kind of like look. Yeah, you have to have, you gotta have cards, you gotta, it, the patents like how the card, how you pay for the card and uh, what the cards do and the types and all of that stuff. We actually have the patent hanging above our bed because that's the nerdiest thing that I can think of. It is, in fact, hanging above our bed. I I think about it a lot in my sleep. The tradable card game. So a tradable card game is, I mean, I, we kind of like know what it is, but the objective is that you can play the game, but also trade the cards, right? Yeah, absolutely. So um, say you have a card that I want and uh, you have a card. Sorry, say that you have a card that I want and I have a card that you want. We can just trade those cards. That's like encouraged. Is encouraged and a very wonderful part of this game. Uh, it is probably one of my favorite parts of playing Magic the Gathering because you get to, uh, get to, get to kind of like curate your collection kind of thing. You get to, you get to get new fresh stuff in a lot when you have uh, trades. Because you don't have to rely on a store having the thing that you want. You can just see if your buddy has it in a binder and then exchange it, which is pretty cool. Notably, um, cards do have value. Um, so it is important to look up uh, the value of your cards. Um, I would say uh, 
more notably that you should look up the prices of your mythic rares and rares uh, more than your commons and uncommons. They're the ones that'll have a higher uh, premium. Don't get us wrong though. There's still like 25 cent mythics though. For real. Yo, bummer. So the the whole deal of magic like us playing this game it's something something we're like wizards in uh, the universe galaxy thing right like shadow money wizard gang oh i think back in the day that was uh what magic was that we were we were the wizard commanding these spells or uh, I think then they shifted us to being planeswalkers that are casting and summoning these spells and stuff, which is why a lot of older cards, instead of just saying, like, creature goblin, it said summon goblins because we're the wizard summoning the spell kind of thing. Which is admittedly, like, pretty cool. Because planes, those are, like, places, galaxies, universes. There are different places in the Magic the Gathering storyline. A lot of these planes um, in Magic are defined by blocks. So back in my day of playing Magic the Gathering, Magic sets came out in what were called blocks. Um, blocks were three different sets kind of like going over the storyline of that, uh, that particular kind of like theme or area so they were like all set in a certain place or all had the vibes were generally the same um and like the same story like kind of thing tell me more about like how blocks worked or because you get one block a year right one block every two years i believe it was you get a block a year um or you get kind of like two sets from a block in a year and then like your winter set like january era is the end block and then you start your new blocks that is not how things are today uh that is correct uh blocks do not exist anymore so your a block would be like mirrored in then Dark Steel, then Fifth Dawn. That is a block of Magic the Gathering. It all pertains to the the same story. It all goes together. Uh, it's kind of like beginning story, middle story, end of their thing. We don't necessarily get not only blocks, like, like three parts to a story, but the timing is different. The way they do it now is so however long the story, however long they deem the story to take is how many sets we will get for that. Which is why like some sets we only get one, like Dominary United, we only got one of that. And then we went to Brothers War so looking at the wizards website there's 23 different formats which are ways to play magic now of course we're going to teach you how to play all of these formats and give you in-depth rules guidelines but right now at a given time since we're just kind of learning how to play magic uh, we're gonna try and stick with uh at least just just a few to get dip your toes in get started starting with like the most popular formats i would say i would say commander is one of the most popular the most popular format in magic the gathering which is why wizards of the coast likes to make so much commander focused product i would say other popular formats i would say like the second one that i hear the most about would be modern uh modern is definitely um one of the best up there uh, i'd say uh booster draft is really good uh pioneer uh sealed legacy 
now I'm just looking at the list because there's there's ones on here I didn't even know existed. There are some formats on here that are crazy, but they seem really cool. So the li <laughs> here's the names of all the different ways that you can play Magic the Gathering: Commander, Booster Draft, Standard, Pioneer, Modern, Sealed Deck, Alchemy, Explorer, Historic, Arena Only formats on their app or website we will talk more about that later commander draft popper brawl conspiracy two-headed giant legacy vintage plane chase oathbreaker team booster draft team sealed deck freeform momir basic and commander 1v1 insane when asked how do you want to play Magic? Apparently, you have 23 different answers. I think you have more than that, but those are just the 23 noted formats on the Wizards of the Coast website. Hunting for a new person to take a look at. You know, you're like, oh man, what am I going to get into? I like to try and play what are the most popular formats, uh, just because of the fact that, like, you know, you can't always walk into a store and uh, try and find a game of... Momir basic because that's just physically impossible unfortunately yes it is a mtg online only format we looked it up last night because we were like what is this um so yes that in that case it is physically impossible but i do agree with you and like sitting me sitting here you know playing for a year you sitting here even playing for 12 like someone coming into this and trying to figure out that like they want to play the game so they're going to the website they're trying to find out more about it they have it chunked out they give you some details they give you some resources but that 23 different ways to play a fucking game is nuts absolutely insane but it's one of the things again that makes magic the gathering stand out from everything else you have so many outlets to play this game and it's so cool that there are 23 different ways to play the game and it's so interesting because like with with that many possibilities like you're just never going to be bored you're never going to like completely master one unless you give it all of your time and attention but like looking at it from the perspective of someone who has never played the game or wants to play the game like this is a lot and we recognize that and that's why we're here is because we know that there is just a lot and once you dip your toes in like many magic the gathering players ask the question how do I play Magic the Gathering? I've heard that reading the card explains the card, but that could be lore of old. This guy took was calculated, but man, I'm bad at math, and math is for blockers. The other cool thing about having so many different formats is that you have different ways to play with friends, because there are some formats that you're playing as teams, uh, sometimes it's like teams of two, teams of three. Um, sometimes you're playing in a group or a pod of four people. Sometimes you're playing 1v1. So you have all these different ways. Many ways to interact with people. And it's 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 one of my other favorite things about this game is the the human interaction is you get to you get to just sit down and make friends with people uh, all walks of life. You know, uh, it's not like you're sitting down playing some Call of Duty and, and you're never going to see these people like ever again kind of thing. You build a real sense of community and friendship uh, in this game. Well, magic is the gathering we did along the way. Magic is the friendships we've made along the way. Relationships. Like we mentioned, all of these formats are on magic.wizards.com the wizards of the coast website they also have separated in each format the rules of the game and the ban lists the cards that are not allowed that you can't play um how many cards you can have in a deck again all things that will teach you all things that we are going to go over in other videos the purpose of this podcast was just to kind of get to know us what what are our thoughts and feelings on magic the gathering and also what the fuck is magic the gathering because you know we may still not have answered that question yeah, I, we tried 
we are attempting to do something very challenging, which is explain a card game that has been around for 30 years, has 23 listed on the website ways to play, all with their own rules and what's required and all of that. And Magic 20 years ago and Magic today aren't the same. That's why I say maybe we didn't answer that question and that's okay because it, that's the truth. Magic today is not how Magic was even five years ago, which is another thing that we'll probably talk about. But the important thing to know is that you have two very friendly resources that are here that are going to teach you how to play these formats, how to understand the rules, and we are gonna dive in section by section, bit by bit, to give you the nitty gritty. We will eventually learn what this game is together, cause we don't fucking know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We appreciate you watching, and we hope that we have provided you any amount of information and knowledge, or this could be like a slight card game induced fever dream, we don't know. Um, but if you would like to help us uh, make more content and support the channel, you can find us on Patreon. Uh, the link is in the description below. You can also find us on our socials on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and the TikToks. At Grim Tutors MTG, and all of the links are down below. Thanks for watching. <laughs>